Hey everyone, this is Sam from Rococo, and in this video, we're going to run through how to livestream full performance motion capture, including body, hands, and face from Rococo Studio directly into Unreal Engine 4.26. Not a lot has changed in the workflow from 4.25, so if you already know the workflow, you should be good. But the big new change is that you can now stream your mocap live without being in the play or simulate modes, which opens up some new options. Let's jump into it. So the first thing you'll want to do is search for and install our plugin from the Unreal Marketplace. You can just search for Rococo, open up the plugin, and then install it to 4.26. The other place you can get our plugin is from our GitHub page, which always has the most up-to-date version of the plugin. Okay, now that we've installed our plugin, let's launch and get into Unreal 4.26. So I have a brand new project here, and the first thing I'll do is make sure our plugin is enabled. Go to Edit, Plugins, and search for Rococo. If the plugin isn't enabled, click the checkbox and then you'll be prompted to restart Unreal. Okay, Unreal restarted, plugin is enabled, and now we can prepare our character to receive live mocap. For this demo, I'm going to use our Rococo Mime character, which is rigged with the Apple ARKit 52 blend shapes that allow for facial motion capture. You can download this character for free in the description below. First, I'll import the FBX of our character. On the Import Options screen, make sure to check Use T0 as ref pose and import morph targets. Then hit import all. After the character is imported, I'll right click on the mime mesh and go to create anim blueprint. Then I'll double click the blueprint to open it up. Once you're in the Anim Blueprint, you will right click on the grid and add a Rococo Body Pose node, a Rococo Face Pose node, and a Component to Local node. I'll wire these up, and then I'll create a new variable and name it Rococo Actor Name. Then I'll change the variable type to Name. When I drag the variable into the blueprint, I'll select Get Rococo Actor Name. And then I will wire it into the body and face nodes. Next, I'll hit Compile. At this point, we'll get a bunch of errors, which is fine because we aren't done yet. I'll select the Rococo Actor Name variable. And now I can input the name of the actor profile I'll be using in Rococo Studio. In this case, it's just my first name, Sam. The next thing we'll have to do is build a bone map asset for our Rococo body pose. If we select the body pose, we can see that there is currently nothing selected or available in the dropdown. So to create our bone map, we'll head back to the editor and then we'll right click in the content browser and select miscellaneous data asset. Then we'll search for smart suit and select smart suit body map data. I will rename this mime bone map and open it up. So by default, these are filled in automatically, but they likely won't match your character's skeleton. So we have to input the correct names from our character's joints for everything to work. The way I usually do this is I open up the character's skeleton, and then I place my bone map right next to it. Then it's just a matter of clicking on the appropriate joint, copying the name, and pasting it to the bone map. So 
So one of the trickier parts of doing this can be when you get to the finger bone mapping. So if we check out our mime skeleton here, you can see that although our bone map asks for left thumb, left index finger, our skeleton on our mime instead says left finger one, left finger two, left finger three. When you see this on a skeleton for your character, usually finger one refers to the thumb, finger two refers to the index, three the middle, four the ring, and five the pinky. What I usually do is I always start with the proximal digit for my character. So I'll copy this for our thumb, add it to proximal. But then you can see this left thumb medial doesn't match the next bone, but that's okay. Usually I just start from the proximal and then I use the next two bones. So I'll copy the distal and I will add that right here. And I'll copy the tip and I'll add that to the distal, which is confusing. And then usually you can see that we have another bone here, but we don't have another bone on our character. And that's okay, I'm just gonna double up this last joint and the bone map will be able to figure out the appropriate bones from that. But every single field here needs to be filled, even if you are doubling up these joints from your skeleton. So let's just continue to fill this out in real time because this can be confusing. So for left finger two, I'm going to select the proximal, go to the index proximal, copy that in. Then I'm gonna select the medial, copy that, put it in the medial, select the distal, put it in the distal. And here we do have a left finger two tip that we could put into this left index tip. But I usually find you get the best results if you just copy this last joint instead of using the tip bone. You can get different results with different characters. So if you're getting a funky result on your hand animation, try maybe using the tip. If you just try playing with the different bones, you can find whichever works best for your character's skeleton. I'll do the same for the middle. Copy the left finger three, which is going to be our left middle. Copy it in. Grab the medial. Copy it in. Distal. Copy it in, and again, I'm not going to do this left middle tip, even though we have one. I'm just gonna use the distal again. So I'll time lapse through the rest of this, but if you're getting any errors or funky results from your live mocap, usually the problem is in your bone map with something being named incorrectly or possibly putting in the wrong bone. So always make sure to check the bone map if you are having issues. When you're finished, hit save and then navigate back to the blueprint and select your bone map from the drop down list. And now hit compile and save. Boom, no more errors. The nice thing is you can save these bone maps for future uses with the same character or multiple characters with the same skeleton. Just right click on the bone map, hit show in Explorer, and then you can copy that bone map to other projects that you might have in the future. Another thing to mention is that you will get the best results from your finger mocap if you have your hands posed like this character with the thumb lying flat alongside the fingers. You'll also need your character to be in a T pose or you may get odd results. You can make adjustments to your character within Unreal by just using a transform modify bone node. Just make sure to hit replace or add to existing on the rotation of the bone you are adjusting. Okay, just a few more things to do now. First, we'll add a Rococo receiver to the scene. When we enable live streaming in Rococo Studio, we want to make sure we're using this port number so Unreal knows where to find the live mocap. Finally, we'll go to Window, Live Link, and add a Rococo Studio source. It's worth noting that you'll have to add this source every time you reopen this project. At this point, our character is ready and we can jump into Rococo Studio to set up the mocap. So here I am in Rococo Studio and I'm already in my Rococo smart suit and smart gloves. 
Now I'll just enable facial capture using my iPhone 10 or higher. You can check out our other tutorials on YouTube for how to get all this hardware set up. You can also see here that my actor profile name matches the one that we entered into our Rococo actor name in the blueprint. Again, it's just my first name, Sam. Once that is done, I'll go to start live stream and I will enable our Unreal Engine module. You can also click this gear icon to change and see what port you're using, which again will have to match our Rococo receiver port in Unreal. Okay, so now if we jump back into Unreal, drag our blueprint into our scene, and then hit play, boom, we are now live streaming full performance capture directly into Unreal. So now we get into the new change in the plugin for 4.26. You can now preview your mocap outside of play mode. So if we head back to our blueprint, you can see that we have our character being driven by our mocap just as a preview. In addition to this, if you head back to the editor and select your blueprint in the main hierarchy and select skeletal mesh, and then check update animation in editor, there you go. Now we're streaming our mocap to our character without having to hit the play button. So here I've added our mime to a free little village environment I found on the marketplace, and you can see that we're still getting great performance. We've put a link to download this mime character in the description below, as well as a link to a demo scene that is all already set up and ready for you to test out this workflow. We hope this video was helpful. Please put any questions in the comments below, and you can also find a link to the full release notes in the description below. Thanks so much, everyone, and stay tuned for more Unreal content coming soon.